So I've got a question from Deborah, and Deborah's question is about uh, should you trust your emotions? Which is a very good question because you hear that a lot, right? Trust your feelings, trust your emotions, trust your instincts. And um, the short answer is not really. You shouldn't always trust your emotions. At the same time, you could, all, you could also say always trust your emotions. And really what it comes down to is the distinction between what's genuine and what's truthful because they're not always the same thing. Sometimes you could have a genuine feeling and it is genuine in that it's, it's not a fake one. It's not, uh, it's not a lie, but it's not really ultimately the truth. So for instance, if a person is experiencing depression or something, their emotions are genuine, but they are not truthful. They are not in touch with the truth. Um, because with depression, there is you know, the, the, the core feature of depression is that sense of hopelessness or pointlessness. So this goes through, another great example would be because, oh, well, trust your, trust your feelings to someone with an addiction. And of course, many of us have addictions, right? Um, it's a genuine emotion. Maybe it could be an anger. It could be a, a, a huge sense or, or an urge, you know, any of those bodily feelings that we have, which are genuine, but it is the addiction speaking. It's not reality speaking. The addiction will say you need to use that substance, you need to drink, you need to smoke, you need to do whatever. The truth is you don't, which is, it, is, it sounds like a cold, hard truth, but it is reality that we don't need to do those things. Um, but the emotion behind it will advocate for doing that, right? So does that mean we discard our emotions? No, it doesn't mean that at all. In fact, with an addiction, for instance, part of the, the way we, we learn to move past our addictions is to really start to, to feel into what are the feelings in the body. Certainly not to repress, deny, or suppress them, right? Because that never helps with an addiction. It's to actually maybe even kind of induce the feelings and bring them up, even though they're not always truthful. In fact, with addiction, they're, they're, they're very, very rarely truthful. But that doesn't mean that you discard them or you ignore them. It's actually very, very helpful and powerful to be able to see where am I emotionally? What is my addiction saying to me right now? What are the emotions uh, around it saying? Because that's bringing awareness to it. And through that awareness, you're actually cultivating a sort of a a healthy dissociation between between yourself and that compulsive controlling addiction. So emotions are incredibly important for us in life. We know I've talked in the past on this channel about uh, emotional numbness and things like this. And when we're numb emotionally, what tends to happen in our life is that we become a little bit stagnant. We stop developing as quickly as we once did or as, or as we should. And that's because we are cut off from our emotions and these emotions, good, bad, are sort of pointing us towards something. They're, they're actually, it's been said before, it's like a navigational system, right? In that you're, when, you're, when your emotions are functioning properly in a healthy way, they'll keep you away from what's not for you or what's dangerous for you and they'll move you towards what it is that you genuinely want. Again, to talk about desire, for instance, that's another good example. It's like um, with depression, the quintessential, another quintessential aspect of, of depression is to be cut off from desire. So someone who's undergoing or feeling depressed will very often find it very difficult to answer the question, what is it that I want from my life? Cut off from that desire, that feeling in the body. So emotions are very, very important, but it's not as simple as always trusting your feelings. 
There has to be an inquiry into the, the ones that make us feel hopeless or negative or feel like we're losing a sense of control. They are real experiences, they're genuine, but they're not truthful. I guess really what I'm saying here is you can boil it all down to, and this is, uh, this is kind of what Byron Katie says, it's, uh, if, the, if the truth makes you feel like crap about yourself, you know, once you've sat with it for a while, it's probably not the truth, you know, but the emotions will tell you. The emotions and negative emotions around that would say, I have to, I have to question this more. I have to really sit with this more. Um, because, you know, those, those, anything that's going to make you feel bad about yourself deserves to be inquired into because there's a hell of a price to be paid for carrying it. Guys, I hope that's somewhat insightful. Yes, in general, trust your emotions, but not always. Not always. They are always truthful, but they will actually sometimes be not always in alignment with reality as it is. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.